Hello, this is Kevin from Woodworks Technical Support. This video is titled, U.S. Shear Walls, Wind Loads. The U.S. Woodworks Design Office Suite has recently been updated to conform with the NDS 2015, IBC 2015, ASC 710, and SpidWiz 2015. The Design Office Suite consists of three separate programs, Sizer, Connections, and Shear Walls. Sizer can be used to complete gravity load design. Connections can be used to complete the design of the typical fasteners included in the NDS and shear walls, which is a lateral load design tool. Shear walls can be used to design light frame wood shear walls up to six stories in height. Shear walls will automatically generate wind and seismic loads following ASC 710 based on input climactic data. The program will then distribute these generated loads to shear lines based on both flexible and rigid diaphragm assumptions. This video will only touch on the topic of wind loads in relation to the shear walls program. For key codes and sales related questions, please email sales at woodworks-software.com. For technical questions, please email support at woodworks-software.com. These emails and information can also be found in the help menu under the About Woodworks Shear Walls button. This is a quick overview of the presentation. This presentation is split into three different parts, each having its own separate video. Part one is on wind serviceability features. Part two is on the inputs for wind design. And in the third part, we will go over the relationship between the log file and the loads displayed in plan view. Then a discussion of wind uplift and wind parapet loads, which will lead into a demonstration of manually adding wind loads in an example project file. Links to each part are provided in the video descriptions. For Shearwalls 11, we've incorporated wind serviceability requirements from ASC 710 commentary CC 1.2. Since the criteria comes from the commentary, these requirements can be considered voluntary. I recommend reading the commentary to gain an understanding of what serviceability load and limits are applicable to your structure. The commentary suggests a drift limit anywhere between L over 400 and L over 600. So in the design settings tab, we have added an option to specify the drift limit for wind design. In the load generation screen, you will now see that there are two wind speed inputs. One for your basic wind speed, which is used for the design of your main wind force resisting system, and another for wind serviceability. The load case associated with the main wind force resisting system is 0.6 W plus 0.6 DET, meaning the loads will be factored down to ASD level. Now, there's the additional input of the three second gust serviceability wind load. To determine what input is appropriate, you should review the commentary. The wind speed maps in the commentary are intended to address shorter return period wind events than the return period associated with the main wind force resisting system. The load case associated with the input is WA plus D, where WA is the wind load based on serviceability wind speeds. Program does not recalculate wind loads based on the lower limit. Instead, it determines a factor using the following equation, which is used to adjust the loads for the purpose of checking wind serviceability. In the design results, if you click on wind design, flexible or rigid diaphragm, you will see two options for deflection and hold down displacement tables, one for the main wind force resisting system and another for serviceability. You'll also notice a story drift table, which checks the resulting wind serviceability deflection limits. The wind drift requirements from ASC 710 CC 1.2 may be very difficult to meet, but the check is voluntary since the clauses are included in an appendix of the code. Code requirements and structural analysis completed by shear walls can only account for the stiffness of wood structural panels, gypsum wallboard, and other shear resisting materials from SpidWiz 2015 tables 4.A through C. The deflection analysis also does not account for the stiffness contribution from cladding or walls specified as non-shear walls. On the bottom right of the screen is a screen capture from the design settings tab, which shows the settings that allow you to ignore the contribution of dipsum based materials for seismic design, but still use it for wind design purposes. This may be useful when trying to meet wind deflection serviceability requirements. When it comes to meeting wind serviceability requirements, it is worth reminding you that each shear line is going to require hold downs, whether the shear line is specified as perforated or segmented. 
Increasing a shear line's panel thickness and reducing the edge nail spacing will increase the shear strength of a shear wall, but making these sorts of changes does not necessarily reduce the deflection. Typically, the biggest contribution to wind deflection occurs to the high aspect ratio segments. Since the hold down or wall anchorage slip deflection component in the deflection equation is factored by the aspect ratio of a segment. So segments with high aspect ratios between 2 and 3.5 are going to deflect significantly more than shear lines with low aspect ratios. If you want to quickly ignore the high aspect ratio segments for shear design, there is an option in the settings design tab that is toggled by default called wood structural panels and fireboard allow 3.5 to 1 aspect ratio. If you uncheck this box, any wall with an aspect ratio between 2 and 3.5 will not be included in the shear and deflection analysis. Another method that can be used to avoid high aspect ratio segments is to create and use non-shear wall segments instead of openings. This is only applicable to segmented shear walls since the size of openings does not affect their design like perforated shear walls. If you look at wall line A in the screen capture, I used an opening to create two different segments along the shear line. Segment A-1, 2 has a very high aspect ratio and is attracting a lot of deflection. If you look at wall B, I have created a wall with the same details as wall A, but instead of using openings to create the, the two segments, I've used non-shear wall segments. You can utilize non-shear wall segments for the same purpose of an opening, except using non-shear wall segments gives you the flexibility to decide exactly what segments you want to utilize to resist shear forces along shear line. To create a non-shear wall segment takes three steps. First, click on the segment you want you would like to make a non-shear wall. Then, make sure the design and group checkbox is not toggled. Then toggle the wall type to non-shear wall. Doing these steps will turn the segment into a non-shear wall. I did this for both of the wall segments B2 and B3 in the screen capture. Finally, if you decide that wind serviceability is not a concern, you can quickly turn off the story drift check in the design settings tab. All you have to do is uncheck the check story drift box and press OK before running the design.